Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back, you are live here on theCUBE as we're uh, wrapping up our coverage here at Dell Technologies World 2018. We are in the sands, we're live in Las Vegas with 14,000 plus attendees, 4,000 I think in the Business Partner Summit, really well attended, the Solutions Expo's floor, still crowded and some really neat stuff inside there. Along with John Troyer, I'm John Walls and we're joined by Doug Schmidt, who is the President of the Global Services at Dell EMC. Doug, thanks for joining us, we well, appreciate thanks it. Thanks for having me, John. Yeah, let's talk about global services, all right? Yes. First off, I mean, Big waterfront, right? That's you know pretty broad. Tell us about how you segment you know, the responsibilities and what all that means. Well, yeah, so uh, the overall services family really has four groups in it. Uh, it has a consulting uh, team, and as you imagine, has an education services team. Uh, we have uh, VirtuStream for cloud, helps uh, manage the cloud for our customers. And then uh, my team and I have responsibility for support, deployment services, installations, and also managed services. So. Uh, good sized team in the sense of helping our customers, around uh, 60,000 direct and indirect team members in 180 countries. So say 100 plus, right? Almost yeah, 200 countries. Yeah. So you know, we, we had somebody on, uh, on from the global side yesterday and we just barely nicked into this a little bit. That was interesting when you think about it on a global basis. At least we tend to think of US, right? I mean, yeah. you know, it's US centric. But you've got to deal with, you know, you know EU compliance and different kinds of governance and, and uh, of course, you know, different work cultures, different uh, uh, government, different governance, what have you. Um, so, uh, complicated, right? I mean, this is not easy stuff uh, to be able to bring the product to a, a different culture, a different mindset, right? Well, that's, that. yes, I mean, if you're asking, yes, the complexity is there, which is, uh, that uh, really, but that's the value we bring to our customers. One is, believe it or not, the size and the scope helps us build better products. The feedback from our customers across multiple channels, uh, whether it be through the data we get back through phone home and AI, helps us build better products globally, as well as help our customers. The calls we get in, social media, we're able to really aggregate that, take all that data and that information, build better products and custom build the solutions for the regions or the countries that we're in. So there's, there's yes, the complexity uh, has some minuses, but it has actually more pluses in helping us build better services, solutions, and products for our customers. So can you give me an idea of something you picked up from somewhere else that turned out to be useful you know, across the board, or just maybe something that you hadn't thought of, whether it was some response from a customer in a different work environment that you could apply? across the board. Anything come to mind? Well, like yeah, that? I think, you know, you look at things like uh, WeChat in, in Ch China and things like that that are occurring and how they're using uh, both the social media, uh, texting and all of these things about doing business and wanting services. And so that helps us build better social media platform to listen to our customers. Uh, we take those learnings and then apply them globally uh, very, very quickly. Those would just be one example, but it, you can pick that up across the product and the solution sure. side as well. Sure. well Doug, I, a couple of things you, you said have already kind of sparked my imagination. I mean, support used to be, well, file a ticket, and if, if you don't have a ticket, don't bug us, right? And it yes. was a very reactive. And already you've talked about a lot of things that are proactive, the, both the phone home capabilities and, and other, other uh, data collection and proactive uh, that is correct. capabilities. Can you talk a little bit about how your team in the you need to be digitally transformed. You, your customers, are, you, you've got to be more proactive. We can't just be sitting, you know, we can't, we can't say, have you filed a ticket? Well, then I can't talk no, to you. No, that's correct. And, and hang no, that talk. wouldn't work today. You know, it, that's exactly right. Uh, look, the customer's feedback to us, uh, and, and we hear this resoundingly uh, loud and clear is, look, it's got to be proactive, it's got to be predictive, and it's got to be remote. And it's all about being fast, accurate, and keeping that uptime in those environments running. So to your point, what we've really done is we use that data to predict it, predict when a hard drive's going to fail, right? So if you're a customer, whether it's a server, and by the way, we've taken that technology and put it into the consumer products as well. Uh, so hey, we, we get a hold of the customer and let them know that something's going to fail before it fails, uh, and that's the proactive predictive. And we're really getting that, quite frankly, from the data we're getting back uh, on that phone home using that big data to then triangulate and build better products, better services. Um, the other thing though that we've done, and we continue to do is, not every customer on that proactive side wants to be contacted the same way. 
Uh, I'll use my family as an example. My daughter wants to be text. You know, she's got to use text. Uh, my wife uh, likes email, and my parents, by the way, still want to be called because they want it to be explained what's going on. Um, and so we have to also build in the omni-channel with that predictive and that proactive capability. There's been an evolution in, in the acceptance of uh, talking back to the vendor, uh, you know, machines talking to machines on-prem over the years. Is, is, are, are, are people now at the, are most people now at the phase where uh, they don't consider that a security risk or proprietary? People, people who didn't understand it in the early days were, we're very careful, you know, you're, we're, everybody's still very careful about what goes through their firewall, but is there, a, is there a, are we at a place now where that's just a... I think a it's becoming more widely accepted. Yeah. I wouldn't want to say that everybody's there yeah. yet. Perhaps not the three-letter agencies and, uh, you know, a few... That you is know, correct. Like I that. mean, you know, look, it, it depends on the environment. And by the way, when it, and that's the key is using that information to customize the services for those environments, right? And a little bit of, that's a good point because that's how you want to contact them or how much you can do, but we can, tailor that for the customer's needs and using that information to make sure we do that. It seems like there may also be a, a staffing, uh, I, I'm interested in your, in your staffing because, right, digital transformation, let's make it real, the entire industry has, a, has an interesting competency issue in that, you know, we've got to be all main, we've got to all be current, uh, there may be new sets of skills coming up, uh, we certainly expect our, the, the, on the IT side of the house, their customer, your customers to, Become more skilled at new at new technologies. That's right. And um, but you're in support, and and you know the, the support and the installation side. How are you looking at training your people and and upskilling your people to be able to deliver that kind of proactive support? Well, that's a, that's a great question, and and I'll take it from two points actually. One is as the machine learning and the AI helps us uh, solve what I'd call low complexity issues right now, moving up the stack every day uh, to do more complex issues, then what you find is, is that when customers do contact us or we do need to reach out to them, it's usually in complex situations, right? And so we spend a tremendous amount of uh, resources continually upskilling our talent uh, in, in, the, in the remote support deployment as well as installation so that they're able to handle that. So spend a lot of time with our education services team to make sure that we're out in front of all the new technologies and the capabilities. Uh, you've heard a lot about remote and virtual learning. Uh, we're, we're on the cutting edge of that as well. That helps us stay abreast and up to date as well. But uh, yes, it is, it is going to take uh, additional time and, and uh, resources to stay ahead of that curve. We're there, but we want to make sure we stay there. And, and is that something that, that I wouldn't say you have to coax people along or bring them along, but help them understand that, you know, if we're on the cutting edge, you've got to be on the leading edge of the cutting edge, right? You, you've got to be the leader in this, right? In, That's your, in your workforce. I mean, how do you, well, I guess they're motivated, professionally motivated, right? But you do have to bring, it's culture. I mean, uh, you, you've got to create a, a different kind of culture, don't you? Well, no, you're, you're, yeah, you're right on that. And I, but what that, I think culturally, what we've always, always had at Dell Technologies is listening to the customer and all 60,000 get to hear every day from our customers multiple times. Mm -hmm. So that in and of itself helps us. If, I mean, we're listening. We hear what the customers want, what we need to be doing to help them. That pushes us to want to stay up on that. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I, you can't be in the services industry, as you well know, without having that natural desire to want to learn, right. want to help your customer. And so, look, we have to have the resources and the capabilities inside that education, but culturally that's been built in because we listen to the customers. Yeah, and, and how different is it from the customer perspective then, maybe than five years ago, 10 years ago, in terms of expectation, in, in terms of you know, what you, the kind of support right. they, they expect to get from you? Um, has that been altered as you give them new tools, you make them faster, you make them smarter, you make them more agile, but they also, are they turning you for different things or a different level of service now? Oh, yes, that's, uh, yes, absolutely. And I think that starts with, if you look five years ago, it was the service was really, I'll call in when something, I have a problem. Uh, first, the expectation is, I want you to call us before we have an issue and let us know what we need to do to prevent it. And the second one is, if I do have to contact you uh, via multiple uh, omni-channels, then uh, you know, I got to have the best and the brightest now inside the organization. So routing and getting all of those to the right resources at the right time, right? As you're saying, the technical capabilities, the complex environments, the customers want to get to the right person quickly 
and accurately now uh, the very first time they get a hold of us. Sure. Yeah. So Doug, you mentioned about Dell Technologies, right? This is the first Dell Technologies world. Uh, it's no longer, I think, I, I went to a few EMC worlds. I think I was on the first Cube uh, back in 2010 uh, at EMC World. That was mostly storage folks, right? Now, with, you've got storage folks, you've got server folks, so you've got uh, VMware here, here as a big presence, Pivotal was doing some things. Systems are more complicated now. So uh, maybe a two-part question, how is, the, how is the show going for you? And also, but then this, impl this implication that you know, these system, Dell Technologies is a stack and there's a, there's a lot of IT people now that have to cover more of the stack and how does that, how does that affect your job in terms of complicated cross, cross rack systems that are pinging back home and uh, need right. help? <laughs> That's about three questions in one. Yeah, I think there's, there's a few in there, right? Yeah. Well, so, hey, well, first of all, I think that when talking to the customers and uh, being here at Dell Technology World, what we're hearing is, a, is actually confirmation uh, on the proactive, predictive, uh, remote support and also getting to the correct uh, talent uh, very quickly, as you've mentioned, the, the education and capabilities of the team. So that's good because that's kind of there uh, validating that. But, but more specifically to your question about how does that, how does that translate into you know, the real world of how we're delivering? Well, you know, first of all, with that, that information coming back and being remote, we can get it to the correct people very quickly. So yes, it would be far more complex five years ago if we didn't have that, that technology wasn't there for us. Now we know who we need to get it to and who the best person is to solve the problem. And that's really what we're using is, uh, and transformed to is the technology helps us get it to the right place at the right time to solve the customer's issue. And where do you see yourselves going? Uh, as technology evolves, right? Demands change, expectations change, global services is going to change. Uh, I mean, can you make any kind of a, give me a little crystal ball prediction here about, I think this is where we're going to have to be in two or three years out in terms of meeting that customer demand and, and wherever they are and, and whenever they want it. Well, that's, yes, and so, well look, we talk about transformation and making it real here at Dell Technology World, but that we're living that every day as well, right? So we're helping our customers with it, and hey look, the transformation doesn't just, it's not just something we talk about externally, it's we doing that internally, as you're saying, to stay uh, ahead of the market, helping our customers with the transformation. And so as we look forward to that from a services perspective, what we realize is, is uh, look, that complexity and the speed is going to pick up. Uh, we know that we have to continue to use that big data, as Michael said, is the fuel. We know that's the fuel to provide better service, better products. I, we want no daylight between services, our engineering and product teams, and sales. And we're using that information to make sure we build better products, that we provide better solutions and better services faster to our customers, and we're also using that information and giving it to the sales teams that, so they can go out into our customers' environments and help them with their transformation. And, and what's the challenge for you in making all that happen? You think if you, you, you everybody's got a nut to crack, right? Everybody yes. says, okay, this is, so for you, if, if there's a next hurdle or a next barrier for you to, to get over to be able to deliver on that, what, what would that be? Well, we're using the data today that we have, which is, which is very rich, and we're, and we're transforming that into solutions for our customers. But look, that, that data, is you, we're getting more of it every day, uh, making sure that we don't uh, obsess about the data, but that doesn't control us, that we're using it, right? I mean, those, that is, that's part of this, is you definitely want it to be the fuel, but you got to aim it the right way, and I think that's the key, is making sure that we get that point in the right direction. As you're, as you're doing this kind of thing, I'm kind of curious about hiring, right? It, what kinds of roles are you looking for to, wow. to bring in that, that can do that? Because that's, that's, that's very sophisticated uh, data scientists perhaps, that's working, you know, that's pulling in people from engineering. I mean, you, you must be able to, are you able to pull on for the rest of the organization like that or, or who are you looking for? Yes, I talk about real-time questions, right? We could, we could be talking about that one for hours. The answer is yes, and it, that is a good point. If you look at services now compared to five years ago, uh, it's hiring data scientists, uh, it's hiring the analytics and the deep analytics, uh, folks that can help program. I mean, all of this comes together, right? Uh, and so we're working very closely with the schools globally to, to pull those scientists in. Uh, and that's a big hiring uh, competency that we've been focused on for the last four years, uh, and we're going to continue that. We see that continuing down the road. Well, Doug, thank you for the time. We appreciate you telling the, uh, the global services story. Um, great show. 
uh, and we wish you continued great success and I assume it's been a really, really good week for you too, right? It has been an outstanding week, so thank Excellent. you. Excellent, you bet. Appreciate having me. Joining us uh, from Dell Technologies World 2018, you are watching us live from Las Vegas on theCUBE.